So how did the dog fight with Jerry go, Biffy? Well, there was all this shooting here with guns and that. Now he's like, ugh, like really freaked out. Really did my head in. That's like so not what you want in your life right now. Do you know what I mean? This is him, like, bang, yeah. This is me, like, bang, bang, yeah. And then he's all, like, rat a tat 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 And I'm like, talk to the gun, because the cockpit ain't listening. You know what I'm saying? Matt, you must be stressed out big time. Do you know what I mean? And they're all, like, totally disrespecting us, and, like, these really bad racists, innit? This is the BBC, yeah? Hey, check this. We now cross to Dining Street for an address from Mr Churchill, the Prime Minister. We shall give him licks on the beaches, yeah. And, like... The landing grounds and that. And I film it on our mobiles, big time. You know what I mean. All the ladies say, yeah. Say, yeah. For real? Say, yeah. Is it? Go in it. Go in it. And coming up later in the programme, bird flu. Will we all die or will there be a handful of survivors forced to live in caves? But <laughs> first, let's catch up with a few of your emails. Yes, earlier we were discussing food prices and Liz from Datchet has emailed to say, why is food so expensive? Some food items cost a lot more than others. That can't be right in a democracy. That's a good point. <laughs> Margaret from Ipswich says, I blame the farmers. They overcharge for their produce. Sandra from Ealing says, have you seen the price of aubergines? It's a scandal. Luckily, I don't don't like aubergines. Well, that is lucky, Sandra. <laughs> Clive, a farmer from Malmesbury, says Margaret from Ipswich is wrong to blame farmers. Basically, she's talking out of her ass. <laughs> Susan from Godalming reckons Margaret is right to blame farmers. Everyone knows they're greedy. Oh, another one here from Clive. He says Suzanne from Godalming is talking out of her ass as well. Would she be prepared to get up at four in the morning on a freezing day in November and squeeze a cow's tits? <laughs> no, I bet she's some stuck-up bitch of a housewife. <laughs> And there's one here from Simon, also of Godalming. He says, Clive is insulting the woman I love. He's a typical farmer. I eat a lout. <laughs> Controversial stuff there. Again, Clive from Malmesbury says, I'm loading my shotgun, getting in my car and heading for Godalming, where I will hunt down both Suzanne and Simon and kill them like dogs. <laughs> then I'll head for Ipswich and blow Margaret away before turning the gun on myself. So there you have it. Keep those emails coming in. That's right, because we love to know what you think, don't we, Mike? We certainly do. <laughs> Jenny. Uh, went travelling after I left college. Great laugh. Got a job in a bar in Koh Samui. Fantastic. And I woke up one day, looked in the mirror, realised I was 30, hanging out with people 10 years younger than me. So I came back. Most of my mates have sort of moved on. Uh, felt like I'd missed the boat, you know. At which point I decided to become a teacher. <laughs> Quite bright, but lazy. Need a safety net. Be a teacher. <laughs> Something on your mind? No. Come on, Paul. I'm your dad. What do we say? No secrets. Dad, why haven't I got any mates? What? Well, it's Craig Higson's birthday this weekend and he's invited all the boys in my class. Except me. Why doesn't anyone want to be my friend? Well, they don't mean to hurt your feelings. It's just you are quite boring. I mean, I love you, because I'm your dad. But the chances are other people aren't really going to see the attraction. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love all the little stories about what happened at drama club, or how Mum nearly left the gas on when you went to the shops, but let's face it, you're never going to get work as an after-dinner speaker. <laughs> and that lack of animation, or anything interesting to say, can have the knock-on effect that you leave very little impression on people. I mean, if I'm brutally honest, after I've dropped you off at your mum's on a Sunday, well, by Wednesday, even I have trouble remembering what you look like. <laughs> Do you want a hot milky drink? <laughs> Can't remember. Do, do you take sugar? <laughs> Holly? Peter? What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be playing squash. Yes, I am. With you. <laughs> oh, yes. I forgot the kit. What are you two doing? 
Holly's just giving me a massage. Yes, a massage? Yes, that's right. I've been really very tense. Work's been manic, as you know. Shall I get your clothes, please? Huh? Uh, thanks, Holly. Right. Yes, I came round to tell you that uh, I was too busy for squash and uh, suddenly felt my back tense up. How awful. Yes, well, when you're in management, Rog, the stress really can be quite overwhelming. I often need two or three massages a day. <laughs> I really am very tense. <laughs> Sorry, Peter, I, I had no idea. Well, I, I try to keep it covered up at work, Rog, you weren't to know. <laughs> Actually, while I've got you on your own, Peter, I need to ask your opinion about something. Oh, I hope this isn't about Holly seeing some other man, Rog. There's nothing going on. I, I told you we hadn't had sex for months. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she's getting it somewhere else. She's probably exhausted or sore. <laughs> then how do you explain this? A home pregnancy test. I found it in the bathroom rubbish bin. Yeah, yeah, well, what's it say? What's it say? It's not... <laughs> Negative. I mean, she's not pregnant. Oh, thank God for that! Yes! Yes! You must be very relieved. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. I mean, she must be having an affair, or why take the test? I can't just ignore this, Peter. If she's playing around, I have to put a stop to this right now. No, no Rog, 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 I've got something to tell you. That pregnancy test is mine. <laughs> Yours? Yes, Rog, I was thinking of having a sex change. <laughs> what? Yeah, and then when I realised I couldn't have children, I thought, no solid, I'll stay being a man. <laughs> well, I must say, I, I, I'm glad. I mean, you'd be in the ladies' league at the squash club. <laughs> Which is the other reason I decided to knock the whole idea on the head. <laughs> Keep it under your hat, though, will you? Of course. Yeah. Here we are, then. Is that all sorted, then? Yes. Well, I'd better be off if I'm going to find another partner down the squash club. Yeah. Enjoy yourself, Rog. Yes, darling. See you later. Don't hurry back. <laughs> oh, that's right. Just massage me a little bit lower there, Holly. Oh, forgot the kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, hang on, this isn't going to work, Holly. You're supposed to be massaging me. <laughs> Job centre. My God, look at that lot. Queuing up for honest taxpayers' money. Forty pounds is probably a year's wages where they're from. Don't tell me they're all fleeing a war. <laughs> Saying that, I don't mind the ones that wash the windscreens. At least they're having a go. At the end of the road, turn left. Earlier we were discussing the whole thorny issue of speed cameras and we've had a lot of emails from you, both for and against. That's right. Julie from Grantham. A speed camera said I was going too fast when I wasn't. What have you got to say about that, Mr Brown? <laughs> Alistair from Dundee says a safe speed depends on the driving conditions. Very true. Sam from Basingstoke says he disagrees with the whole concept of speed cameras. And Frank from Chepstow agrees. He says it's just Big Brother, isn't it? But Sally from Lanark disagrees. She says cameras save lives. But Phil from Newport disagrees with Sally. Scrap the cameras, he says. And here's another. It says, Mike, every morning I watch you sitting on the sofa reading out inane, pointless emails. And I wonder whatever happened to that intelligent, award-winning frontline journalist who used to report from war zones. You always manage to read them out so cheerfully, but your eyes give you away and Deep down, everyone can see that you're dying inside. <laughs> Keep them coming in because we love hearing from you. <laughs> and now this. With your hair so prettily quaffed, Miss Howard. You resemble nothing so much as the most charming French poodle. I'm flattered, Mr. Gosling. Which leads me to inquire whether at a later stage this evening I might be permitted to attend you on all fours with all the bestial vigour of one of my father's prized mastiffs. <laughs> woof, woof. Precisely. Now, poor old Fife here has been in trouble with his good lady. Isn't that right, Fife? I can never seem to get it right. He takes the rubbish out, then gets chastised for tramping mud into the carpet. Can't do right for doing wrong. He makes a cup of tea, then leaves the milk bottle out of the fridge. I was accused of willfully and maliciously turning it into cheese. <laughs> Imagine that, into cheese. 
<laughs> but that's not the worst of it, though, is it, Fife? Would that it were. Would that it were. No, the thing that consistently lands Fife in the proverbial is... Well, if you'll permit us, we've committed it to verse, which goes like this. It's cathartic for him, or some such Greek-sounding thing. His psychoanalyst says, better out than in. Which, funnily enough, is what this song is all about. <laughs> now, I have a little lady, my better half, my spouse. By nature, she is blessed. She wouldn't scare a mouse. But certain things annoy her. They make her curse and mutter. Best avoid these irritations if you know how your bread is buttered. So when you're see to the missus, better watch your etiquette. The missus is quite a sicker, likes to know what to expect. You'll drive her half demented if you anoint her breasts with oil. But no matter how you're tempted as you come closer to the boil, don't reach around behind her with an out-extended thumb. And in the heat of force of passion, try to push it in her Cause that will make the missus slap you hard across the face, and there'll be Seeing to the missus Not that month At any rate So what were you guys up to this weekend? Oh, uh, we were just getting some things for the garden. Oh. And we got this uh, fantastic pot, actually, from this place up by the garage. It was half price. Really? Yeah, you should check it out. They've got loads of them. They're all half price. No, it's great, that place. I've got half price pots from there before. Yeah, there's a place I go to, actually, at the other end of town. They do half price pots. Mm. I've no idea how they do it. I mean, where's their profit margin? Yeah. Oh, come on, guys. Those pots aren't half price. Uh, I think they are. They've got a big sign saying half price pots. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're genuinely half price, though, does it? I mean, do, do any of you actually know what the full price of a pot should be? Well, do you? Well, no, but... So what are you saying, Steve? I'm saying they're pretending the pots are half price. In fact, that's their full price. So how come you know so much about half price pots? <laughs> Does anyone want another drink? <laughs> What are you saying back there in the pub, Steve, about, about the half-price pots? Just forget it. I'd had too much to drink. Get in the car. It's OK, sir. It'll be all right. What's going on? Where are you taking him? It's been a long time. Still here, Max? I hear you've been causing something of a fuss. <laughs> About half price pots. I have to. What you do is repellent. What you did, Steve. I got out. You, Max, you're the closest thing to pure evil I've ever seen. You let the public think they're getting half price pots. When you know damn well, they're full price. <laughs> Still got the fire, eh, Steve? Oh, that's why I want you back. You must be joking. Do you want me to make you? You can't break me, Max! Get 
Steve? Sarah. What are you doing here? I've been looking for you everywhere. I called your house. I rang your mum and dad. Nothing. Thank God you're here. Look, follow me. Steve, what's going on? I've no idea, but let me tell you. There are some stunning offers in the store today. <laughs> All these pots are half price. <laughs> what are you talking about? Steve, this goes against everything you've ever stood for. What have they done to you? Sorry, did you say half price? <laughs> Are you flossing regularly? Mm hmm Really? Every day? Hmm. Yeah, I thought so. It's important. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that's a bit stiff. Oh. Oh, sorry, just trying to loosen up a bit. We had one of our parties last night and I'm really feeling it today. <laughs> well, you're a man of the world. Don't think I need to be coy. We have these regular little parties, you know, the wife and I. I mean, I hate the term swingers. <laughs> so suburban, you know, we're just a group of like-minded people, you know, all professionals. It's like a dinner party, really, just we have sex with each other after the suite. <laughs> I mean, Emma and I are very secure with one another, you know. I mean, as with all couples, there are some things that I enjoy that she doesn't, you know. The thing is, I've always been very keen on a bit of oral. I know, I know, I know. Dentist oral. Freudian or what? <laughs> anyway, last night, Phil and Janet came, and uh, Janet's like me. Loves to go downstairs, so to speak. So we uh, didn't waste much time getting down to the old, excuse my French, soixante neuf. <laughs> Well, I gave as good as I got. Kind of definition of the job, really, isn't it? And this morning, I woke up and, oh, honestly, I felt like I just swum the channel. <laughs> Your breath's a little bit stale, though. Have you tried a tongue scraper? I wanna hold you, wanna hold you tight. I can't see nice kicks right through it. and choose a main course. You can just bung in the oven when the guests arrive. I know, I know. It's that fucking butternut squash. I oh, know, it is tough. <laughs> Do you think we can salvage any of it? No. Have you got any wild mushrooms? Um, what about peas? Peas are bloody lifesavers. <laughs> oh, and 
they shall not grow their own, don't they? They probably won't be organic enough or something. Look, don't panic. We'll think of something. What should we do about this? Oh, I don't know. Do you think it'll be all right in the freezer till they've gone? Yeah. Are you two all right in there? Yes, yes, Bye. everything's fine. Oh, d Dad picked this up uh, when he went over to Spain. He visited the vineyard. So all right. He's fine. Like, you know, he just works too hard. I tried to tell him, but you know what he's like. Thanks so see you much. soon. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Simon? Simon? <laughs> Simon? Hey, look. It's a text from Andy. It says, awesome risotto. <laughs> well done. <laughs> In 10 metres. Keep straight on. It would have been quicker turning right there, but you don't want gypsies seeing your kids in a car like this. We've all heard the stories, and there must be some truth in them. They call themselves travellers, but some of those caravans haven't even got wheels. <laughs> At the next roundabout, take the third exit. So there we have it. Rain, rain, and more rain. Good for the garden. Not so much fun for the rest of us. Mike. Actually, Jeff, we've had an email from uh, Jean in Windsor about you. She says, have you noticed that whenever Jeff presents the weather, it's always atrocious? The man is obviously a jinx. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh. Here's another one from Ralph in Malvern. It says, it's true about Jeff. He's been presenting the weather all month and the sun hasn't appeared once. Clearly the gods are angry. I think we should sacrifice him. <laughs> Seems a little on the harsh side. <laughs> Steve from Gwent says, I think using Jeff as a human sacrifice is a great idea. We must spill his blood now or the harvest will fail. <laughs> Interesting perspective there. And Wendy from Ricelip says, burn him, burn him on a pyre, only his screams will appease the all-powerful divinities. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Gosh indeed, Jeff. Uh, there's one here from someone who calls himself Zardox the Heretic Slayer. He says, uh, I shall dispatch him with my knife of sacred obsidian, and my masters shall be pleased. <laughs> well, Jeff, my old mate, what do you make of all that lot? Well, uh, luckily, sacrificing weathermen hasn't yet become official BBC policy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. At least not till there's been a phone vote. So, uh, <laughs> please call us and let us know your opinion. Should Jeff be sacrificed for yes, dial 0207 946 0857, for no, dial 0207 946 0858. And remember, you pay the licence fee, it's your BBC, and you decide. <laughs> Good. Good. 
Voilà, maman. <rire> oh là, la maman. Mais la maman. Oh là, maman. <rire> maman Maman Kamada. Ah. Ah. <coughs> That's a rhyme, canson. They always run. Oh, la mama. Not too fatigued by this evening's exertions, Miss Cardio. Why, no, Captain Jennings, I could go on for hours. Then might I suggest that you join me later for some modest theatricals? Gladly. And which roles would we be playing? Why, I would play the part of a wealthy industrialist, whilst you, Miss Cardew, would play a Whitechapel strumpet of such eye-wateringly low virtue that you would leave me as dry as a ship's biscuit. <laughs> Now, Bob, your birthday. Mm -hmm. You know you can get vouchers for these experience breaks. Oh, yeah, Martin went on one of those. He went to Brands Hatch driving a Formula One car. You know, I was thinking of getting you one for your birthday. Really? Well, thanks, love. What is it? It's a complete package. Yeah. You fly down to London from Manchester Airport, first class, mm -hmm. stay at the Hilton, all-inclusive, and then you get a limousine ride up to King's Cross, have full sex with a prostitute, continental breakfast the next morning and fly back home. <laughs> I know what you're thinking carbon emissions, but it's only two flights. <laughs> no, no, it's just... You really don't mind me visiting a prostitute? <laughs> don't be silly. Anyway, it's not visiting a prostitute, is it? It's a sleeping with a whore experience break. She sounds lovely, actually. There's a four-star rating here from The Observer. It says, um, my friend had the oral sex while I opted to be tugged off. Both were excellent. <laughs> this is fantastically nice of you, Jess. Oh, no problem at all, darling. Happy birthday. <laughs> this is a dream, isn't it? What is, you idiot? It's just you and me for the next 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> What the? Oh! How long? Claire! Claire! Good evening. 